QuickBooks Online 2023. Short-term investment sales and recording gains on sale. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30-day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online sample company. If you want the two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser. You can open incognito by selecting the three dots if you're using Google Chrome in the browser. Select incognito window, type into the search engine, QuickBooks Online test drive. We're gonna use the sample company to compare the accounting view, the view Get Great Guitars file is in, and the business view, the view the sample company is in. If you wanna change between the two views, select the cog up top and switch the view down below. Opening a couple tabs to put reports in like we do every time, right click to duplicate the tab, duplicate it, and then duplicate the process. Again, duplicate. And then we'll go back to the tab in the middle, reports on the left hand side. We're gonna open up one of the faves, the balance sheet report. As that's thinking, I'm gonna just see where Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Where do we go on the business view, by the way? The reports are in the business overview tab and then the reports tab, that's where they are. And then we'll tab to the right open up the reports again this time we want the p and the l the profit and the loss we're going to close up the ham boogie scroll up and change the range let's go from 010123 to 022823 and then i'm going to do the month by month comparison compare the months and then run it so now we got january we got feb and feb only has some activity in it thus far with the interest and then the total year to date january and feb so let's go to the tab to the left, close up the boogie. This time I'm just gonna go from 010123 to 022823 and keep it at that and run it. And that's the setup process that we do every time. Now we're gonna be focusing in on this short-term investment account. So first I wanna just give a recap of how we put that on the books and when you might have a short-term investment account on your business books versus your personal books. So I'm gonna close up the assets here and then the liabilities. When we first started the company file, if it was a new business, oftentimes we're gonna need assets to help us to generate revenue in the future. Those assets will generally be things like property, plants, and equipment. In our case, it might be the building where we're gonna do our shop and it might be the inventory that we're gonna to have to purchase because we're gonna to need to sell the inventory in order to generate the revenue. So if you haven't had any revenue in the past because you're starting the business or you're expanding it, then you're gonna need the capital to start the business. Where's that gonna come from? Either it's coming from you, the owner, so you could put money from yourself into the business, the owners into the business in an investment, or we can get a loan. So that's what we did. We took out a loan and we put some money from us into the business and then we bought property, plant, and equipment and investment hoping that that will help us generate revenue in the future as well as inventory. Now we also had some revenue or cash left over and this is where the key comes in with the business here because I think a lot of people get a little bit confused separating the business from the personal books. Meaning on the business side of things, this business isn't here in order to generate revenue from returns on stocks and bonds. It's here to generate revenue from our business of get great guitars. That's what that's so any assets we have in the business, even cash, we have that in there in order to cover current costs as well as possibly invest into the future in property, plants, and equipment and inventory to help us generate revenue that we're gonna get a return on. If we have assets in here that we think we are we, we don't need because we generated revenue and we have cash and there's we have no plans 
of putting it back into the business, buying more property, plant and equipment, for example, or inventory in the future, then we don't usually want to keep it in the business. We would then take it out of the business, give it to the individual. The individual will then generally use it to invest in stocks and bonds or wherever else they would want to go. That's the that's the general idea. Now, it gets a little bit complicated when you have, you know, uh, retirement plans in the business and so on and so forth, but that's the general concept. So from the business perspective, if we had cash that we think we're going to use in the future, but we're holding on to it now, we're going to buy property, plants and equipment shortly, but we're holding on to it. That's when we might then put some of it into like a short term investment typically. And we have a short term investment here. Now there's different rules for generally accepted accounting principles on how you account for an investment if it's going to be short term or mid or long term. I'm not going to get into details with that. I'm just going to give kind of the over the overview concepts here. So we, that's when we would have our short term investment on, on the books, because now I'm still going to use that cash in the future fairly soon, you would think, and then buy property, plant and equipment with it. Now, if this was your personal books or you had a business that if you, obviously if you had a business that was in business for financial uh, uh, investments, investments in stocks and bonds, then you, you, you would be tracking investments in stocks and bonds in order to generate revenue from the stocks and bonds. But our business is not that it's it's a guitar shop like most businesses aren't investment businesses right now on your personal side of things, you can also use QuickBooks for your personal investments. And in that case, you would be tracking, of course, your stocks and your bond accounts in, in QuickBooks. And it works quite well to do that. The goal is just different for your personal for, than from the business. On the business, you're trying to use your assets to generate revenue in the future. That's, you're trying to get a return on your assets from the business. On the personal side of things, your overarching goal is to live well or something like that, right? So because you because you're going to have expenses for vacations and stuff that have nothing to do with generating revenue. So it's a dip, but the double entry accounting system works in a similar fashion. So, so that means then the question is, well, if I have the short term investments on the books, how am I going to break them out? Let's first just do a quick look. If it was a personal thing, if it was on the personal side of things, you might want to group your short term investment accounts into say your financial institutions like a Vanguard versus an E-Trade versus your bank or whatever. If you have multiple places versus your 401k in your business or that you're employed at or something like that. And then you can adjust these periodically when you get the statements, which might be at the end of the month or year, uh, instead of trying to put every individual stock that you hold or even every individual mutual fund in here because you're going to get too much detail in QuickBooks. Remember that QuickBooks is not here to track the day to day transactions of your investments. There's other software that can do that. Oftentimes the websites themselves are the place to kind of track that day to day activity. If you're trying to make make quick changes in terms of your stock positions on a day to day trading basis, but you want to be careful with that too as well. Uh, and you have other software like a personal capital, I think is one and Quicken, I think is another that can give you the ending balances, your balance sheets information from the financial institutions, you know, as as the, the market changes. But QuickBooks is not designed to do that. You could link to the banks and link to financial institutions, but QuickBooks doesn't want to give us the ending balance on the balance sheet. They want to give us the activity so that we can create not only the balance sheet, but also the income statement. So the point is, you can, it's it's kind of cheating to just take the ending balance. And it's not just cheating. It's not going to help you out from a bookkeeping standpoint, although it'll give you a nice snapshot of where you stand. So you might use these different softwares in alignment. You might have a QuickBooks. You might have a personal capital that can help you to, to see where you stand in a snapshot kind of format. So, and also then you might want to break out your, your investments that are in, that are in, uh, not under the umbrella of an IRA or a retirement account in short term. And then you might put long term assets as those that are under the umbrella of a 401k or an IRA or a 403b, those that you can't get into very easily so that you can see your liquid cash versus the cash that you can't really reach. So those are some concepts on the personal side. 
on the business side, we have similar kind of things. If I put if I put the short term investments on the books again, I'm probably going to try to put it in here at one lump sum investment in whatever the financial institution I have it in might have actually multiple investments, meaning I might be in a mutual fund with multiple investments or I might have multiple mutual funds. So I could break it out stocks versus bonds or just have one lump sum uh, here that I change periodically. Then I'm going to get interest or dividends on the investments. If that interest and dividends goes directly into my checking account, then I'm going to see them coming through the bank feeds and I might record them just simply with the bank feeds as they hit the checking account to income. So that means I would have income and I've, I could go over here and I could I could then just have them uh, increase income. Now, normally, if I was to increase income from an investments, then I would put it down at the bottom, not in income up top because it's not part of my normal operations. This business isn't there to generate interest and dividend income. But if we get dividend in interest income, that would be great. I'm going to reflect it at the bottom just to show my my net income before this other investment income would be the general idea now it's also possible for you to roll over your dividend income and in, invest it back in which you would like to then make a journal entry once in a while to put it back into uh, back into your investment in that case so you would have to record the the dividend and interest and then increase your investment account meaning it would be a journal entry in essence, increasing the investment, the amount that you're investing, the other side going to <clears throat> dividend and interest income. Now, the other issue we have is that the investment account could go up or down in value due to the market, not due to dividends and interest. So it's just gonna go up and down in value, the stock price, for example. Now, now if we took the cost, like usually when, that, when we think about like a building down here for fixed assets, when a building goes up and down, generally accepted accounting principles in the United States usually says, well, we're not going to go with the fluctuations of the increases and decreases in the market value of the building in part because we don't know what the market value is, right? There's other arguments than that, but a building is unique until you sell it. You don't really know what the cost is and people can manipulate the value of their books by having higher or lower appraisals on a building. But if you're talking about stocks and bonds that are publicly traded on a public exchange, then you can still have an argument that the fluctuations are not you know, valid or whatever, because you haven't realized them. However, you, you, you pretty well know what the value of your stock is because other stocks are trading for that same amount. Therefore, there's a good argument to, to record your stocks and bonds if they're trading on a market at market value. So then, but then the question is logistically, how do I do that? If I get a, if I get a report saying that my stocks went up, let's say by, by $500 or something like that, then how am I going to record that? I can increase this account by $500 or possibly I make another sub account, which shows the unrealized gain of $500. So I try to track it separately under the parent sub account, another method you can use. And the other side. The two methods you could use is you could put the other side to equity, the argument being that you haven't yet realized it. So I'm just going to have the other side go to equity and not hit the income statement. But that's confusing to most people. So most people I would suggest then are going to report it on the income statement, not as income again, but down here at as other income down at the bottom and just call it unrealized gains or losses. So those are the those are the kind of the issues just want to touch on them. We're going to imagine that we're going to sell our investment. So let's imagine that we just sell it. We could just wait till it sells. So I put it on the books at at uh, 12,000. That's the cost. I'm going to wait till we just sell it. So later on, we're just going to say, OK, I'm going to sell it for whatever I can now. And imagine that we got when we sold it uh, 12,250. So if I got 12,250, and I bought it for 12,000, it went up by 250. So what am I gonna do? The cash account has to go up with a deposit form, let's say by the, by the 12,250. This needs to go down to zero by 12,000 and the other side needs to go on the income statement. Now this is another transaction that we don't expect to happen all the time. So if I go to the first tab and I hit like the plus button, 
there's not really a, a form that's directly related to recording the changes and the value of an investment, right? Because it's not a day-to-day -day transaction, it's like an adjusting entry. So then the question I would usually go through is, is cash affected? In this case, it is, cash is going up, so I would use a deposit form. If cash wasn't affected and you were just recording, say, a gain to the value of the stock, you can then, and you were just saying increase to the stock value, the other side's going to unrealized gain, then you would have to use a journal entry, which you could enter a journal entry by using the registers, meaning you could go into the chart of accounts on the left-hand side and the accounting, and you could then go into the chart of accounts, close up the boogie, and by the way, if you're in the business view, by the way, the chart of accounts is under the bookkeeping, under the bookkeeping, and then the chart of accounts right there. And then you have to hit that thing in the sample thing to see it. Okay, and then you could go into the chart of accounts and you could go into the investment account and use the register and then, and then enter a journal entry, you know, basically this way in the register. So we're gonna go into a deposit. So I'm gonna hit the plus <clears throat> deposit form. My throat's a little messed up here. That's okay. I have coffee. Coffee fixes fixes stuff. So I'm going to say this is from 020222 uh not 22 23 23 we're working in now. Get up to date, man. You're living in the past. This is going to be short term. I'm going to say deposit form this is going to be short term investment has to go down. So we might want to put a description, but I'm not going to put one here. Probably would be good. And I'm just going to put the amount of 12,000. And then the other side, I'm going to have to make an account for, it's going to be gains uh, on sale of investment. So I probably don't have an account in here for that, most likely in, in, in the myriad of accounts that they gave me. So I'm just going to make a new one. I'm going to add it. I'm going to make it not an income account, but rather an other income, other income. So it'll be at the bottom of the income statement. And then you got dividends, other interest. I'll just call it other investment income. And then I'm gonna call it other income. No, I'm gonna call it gains on sale of investment. Something like that, maybe an S, investments. No description, I'll keep it there. Save it and close it. What's this gonna do? Increase the checking account because it's a deposit by the full amount. Or hold on a sec, I need a dollar amount here. Don't get ahead, of, you're getting ahead of yourself. So it's gonna increase the checking account by the 12,250. The other side's gonna decrease short-term investment down to zero and the gains then will be on the income statement of 250 at the bottom of the income statement. That's what should happen. Let's see if that's what does happen. So let's record it, go back to the tab to the right, run it, go into the checking, we're gonna check out the check-in once again. We're always checking out the check-in. There's the deposit right there. So the check-in is so interesting. That's why we check it out all the time. And then the other side is on uh, the, the loan went down or the investment's down to zero because we no longer have it. We cashed it in to buy more stuff because we're gonna make more money uh, selling guitars than we ever would from the dividends and interest. We're gonna be billionaires with our business. And then on the tab to the right, I'm gonna run it again. And then down below, we've got then the interest and the gains are down here. So notice now we, why would we do that? Because I could have put the gain up here, but we don't typically do that because that's not part of our normal operations and we haven't realized the gain. So we're gonna say, hey, look, this is the gains from actual operations that we can count on in the future. And then these are gains from investments, stuff that we don't, isn't really part of our business, but we just put some money in the investments and we got a gain. So we put it down here. Don't expect that to happen again in the future. That's not part of our business model or anything, but hey, we'll take it if it comes. And so that's, that's how it works. So we might show you how to move this one down there too at a later point because sometimes some businesses want, might want to do that. So I'm going to right click on the tab up top and let's see where we stand on the trustee trial balance. 
So let's go to the reports down below. And I'll just open, close the boogie, type in trial balance. The balance is once again on trial. And then I'm going to make from 0101. 23 to 022823 and I'm going to run it month by month so you can see the beginning balances for Jan and Feb Jan and Feb so we are of course at the end of Feb and so you can check out those numbers if they tie out great if not change the range try to expand it and if they uh, still don't match we'll do a transaction detail report at the end of the second month of data input which will help us drill down on any differences.